Hey guys, <clears throat> welcome to Control Line Craftsman. If you're not on Control Line Craftsman yet, I'll go ahead and put the link into the description of this video. We're gonna cover in its entirety with Monocoat a uh, S1 Ringmaster. So this is a scratch built S1 Ringmaster and we're gonna cover every portion of it with Monocoat, including the fuselage. But before we get started covering, I just wanna do a brief overview of a couple things you should do to prepare the wood, prepare the components for Monocoat. Um, first, the sanding itself. Depends on how quick you want to do it. Um, if you want to just get, you know, this edge round, throw some monocoat on it and go fly it. You know, you could cover this in one color and do the whole airplane in about an hour, maybe two hours, something like that. If you want it to last a very, very long time, if you want it to look pretty, if you want it to look like paint, especially, you need to prep it like paint. So one of the easiest parts to sand is going to be your plywood. And once sanded, it's going to feel almost like a plastic because it's less porous than the balsa. Um, the balsa itself, like I said, is more porous, but you can sand it down substantially and get it all the way down to like a 400 grit sandpaper. And it's going to be extremely smooth. Now, on top of this, you can also use sanding sealer products and sand more to create that plastic effect. And the more non-porous you get this surface, the more paint-like your monocoat is going to turn out to be. Now, as far as products to use for getting the wood prepped um one of my favorites is actually valspar uh, it's lacquer paint and then this is just the clear it's very inexpensive comparatively um, when you're building a model the higher the level of finish you want to attain sometimes the higher the dollar amount needs to be spent so if you wanted to spray this over this entire surface, um, sand it after it dries, it, this dries very quickly. It's, it's almost sandable in, uh, I think it's 10, 15 minutes. I mean, depends on where you are, of course. In Las Vegas, everything dries quite a bit faster. So, you know, you, wa you want this, as non-porous as you can get because this is the largest surface area of a flat surface. So this is really going to stick out if you don't do the sanding. And again, if you just want to fly it, if you just want to monocoat it and get something in the air, by all means, throw some monocoat on it. You're not, you know, from a distance, it really doesn't matter. And especially if you're going to crash or if this is your first airplane or first airplane in 50 years, who cares? Just get flying, you know? Uh, one thing I want to talk about is balsa right. A lot of people use balsa right. I personally don't use a lot of it. A lot of times I'm just in a hurry. I don't have anything negative about it. I, I got no problems with it. But one thing that you need to be aware of is there are actually different formulas of balsa right. Um, the cans and colors have changed over the years. You know, these aren't, these are new, but they're not newer. I, I haven't bought this stuff in a long time. So as far as diff different formulas are concerned, uh, this one specifically says right on it, original fabric formula. Um, it's, it's for that, this is for fabric. If you are covering with like 21st century fabric, then of course, you know, this fabric formula would be what you would want. So you, 
you know, if you got 21st century fabric, um, the way it adheres is a little different. You know, you don't do it exactly like monocoat, fairly close. I've seen guys use this formula unknowingly on film. You don't want to use that on iron on film. You want to make sure that your can says film formula. And what this is, is like almost like clear dope. Uh, let's open it up, show you. We're going to open this up because I'm actually going to use this. I'll show you a couple of the key parts I'm going to prep on this airframe. Like I said, it's not something that I personally use a lot, but it is a good product and it does help. So the film formula, very clear and very, very thin. So when you paint this on, you want to hit a couple key areas where the monocoat is going to have problems sticking. For example, when we cover this, I'm going to cover it and it will be assembled by somebody else. Essentially, I'm building an ARF model for another person. So where you're going to have areas sticking is on this wing saddle. When you push the wing through here, you know, you're really going to be pushing through. You're going to have a little bit of overlap on this monocoat here. So you have a good chance of pushing this covering off. So I'm just going to paint it right around this wing saddle. Uh, I didn't show it, of course, but I've already covered these this joint at the doubler. So these are tapered here. The monocoat will have a hard time sticking to this joint because it, of this bevel. So you want to kind of paint it on there. This stuff dries relatively quick. It brushes on very easily. And we're just going to hit those areas where we feel that there is going to be adhesion problems for in the future or adhesion problems in this particular instance because of the way sorry, I keep getting my hand in the way because of the way this model is going to be assembled, you know, we're we're gonna be testing that adherence right there. I mean, that's it. We're using a really strong, solid color. Um, so you're going to get a very slight color difference there. It's all going to get sanded off here in a second when this dries. So I wouldn't worry about that. It's not a big deal. See, this side's already relatively dry and the discoloring goes away. So let's give that a second. And we're going to sand it. And since I've already sanded this down pretty well, you can start with 220 and then hit it with some 320, maybe 400. Uh, either way, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, if you want to hit it with 320 or 400 and just do that, feel it, you, you're going to be able to tell it's going to be pretty, uh, pretty non-porous feeling. And that's what the monocoat wants to stick to is something less porous. Okay, so I just did two coats around where the doubler meets the fuse, all the way around the wing saddle, up onto the fly on both sides. Uh, as far as this airplane, that's all I'm going to do. It's a light product if you want to use uh, the balsa right all over the entire airframe. That's actually a pretty good idea if you wanted to uh, use it as kind of your sanding sealer to hide wood grain and everything. Um, it's, I'm just doing this area because I want to see how well I sanded this airplane <laughs> without it, you know. Um, the plan on this particular aircraft. I, I kept saying monocoat. We're actually going to use econo coat. 
made by Top Flight, relatively the same. Uh, in the next series of for this video series, we're gonna cover this fuse, and I'll show you why I'm using a Cono coat. Um, I'm gonna focus this particular aircraft build on a more beginner friendly level. Uh, that's why we choose the Cono coat for this particular build. It's cheaper. It is easier to go around compound curves. So that's it for the prep work of the fuse. Like I said, it's all about sanding. It's, you know, the more you put into this, the better looking this is going to come out. I have a lot of profile aircraft that are 100% monocoat where people think the uh, fuse is painted. People have asked me, how did you find paint that matches the monocoat? And I said, well, it's because it's monocoat also. So we'll start with the next video in the series on covering the fuse for this S1 Ringmaster. Uh, thank you for watching.